How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome back to Head As Code. Now we've got ourselves a decision to make. Well, to be fair, we're going to make all of the decisions, but which one to make first? We're going with G. So uh, G and H have decided to split up. We're going to go with G, and then we'll come back and do all the other decisions, obviously. But uh, I don't know exactly where we are on the um, flow chart at this stage, but I guess we'll see when we actually hit a an end. Probably a dead end, but we'll see. I banished all the thoughts of leaving with Jasmine from my head and instead made a conscious effort to visualise what it would be like to explore a station with one of the twins. As much as I tried to think about going with H, I figured she'd call me an old man and do her own thing the whole time. Which not about as, might not have been as fun in reality as I was imagining and sure it was funny but I didn't exactly want to babysit a brat. On the other hand, G already showed she was a smarter, so I would need to constantly make sure she didn't screw things up. Ok I'll go with one of the twins. Specifically, I want to go with G. Are you sure you really want to do that? She's glaring in my direction. I lifted up both hands of defense. Yeah, I'm sure. I think your sister's nicer than you and maybe she could let me know some details that could help us figure out what links us all together. What do you mean nicer? To put it simply, you're a brat, H. You've been a big brat. No, wait. A super brat. That's like an even bigger brat than big. Oh yeah? Well, is this bratty enough? She was about to punch me and I shielded myself in my arms, however she stopped her movement right before hitting me to an almost scary level of precision. Huh. I peeked through my arms and saw she was retreating. The other girls did nothing to stop it, content watching and even finding the scene funny. Maybe you're right. What do you know about anything anyway? I don't need to tell you what will happen if she gets hurt, right? I'll destroy you. Okay, I get it. A part of me thought at this moment that perhaps she acted this way because she was annoyed I picked her sister over her. She didn't seem to harbor any of those thoughts. Are we all set with our teams? Yeah, don't worry about age. I'll take care of your sister. We're all in this together. I patted G on the shoulder, which made her flush a little, while she smiled to age. No, wait. That was a victorious smile. Uh oh. But I got into my <laughs> myself into more trouble than I imagined. What if the twins were both brats? Let's head out. You already have to wait for the train. Actually, I'll stay here with H. I need to be here to talk to the others about all this when they, they'll be back too. I nodded and without any further ado, the twin and I went down the stairs. Truth be told, I picked G because I thought she might have been the key to a mystery or two, and she was nicer overall, but one thing suddenly sprang to mind. The next station was the pool. I grew increasingly awkward following that thought. It wasn't like we were going to change, but there was an underlying sense of dread. Like I was doing something forbidden. Yeah, we're not in our swimsuits for Christ's sake, it's all good. We're not going swimming, especially since this is called the dating game. Is anything bothering you? You've been silent and staring at the same part of the station for a while now. I rubbed the back of my head a little and talked, having no idea what I was going to do with it, where I was going with it. Uh, well, it's like, we're gonna, hmm, you know, you're not making any sense. Do, oh, the train's coming. I jumped onto the earliest chance to get out of this moment and pointed at the tunnel. The train was, thankfully, coming for real. As it arrived here, I moved towards it with exaggerated steps, making very little effort to actually hide my embarrassment. We should go inside and leave as soon as possible. Don't you think? Sure, but you're acting real strange all of a sudden. I forced myself to calm down as I entered. So dorky. <laughs> the train didn't take too long to set off towards our new destination. As the train went, I didn't know what to think, so I closed my eyes with my arms crossed. Many times it stopped at a station, opened its doors, closed them and drove away again. On the way between the stars and the pool, something pulled out of my sitting nap. You know, you're not talking too much. Don't you want to know more about me? I mean, it's just, we're going to the pool, right? So what? It's not like I'll get into a swimsuit. Does this make you feel so nervous? I mean, yeah. I don't really care. You're the only one taking this like it's some kind of capital crime. Wise up. We're not even going to jail. Well you, well, you certainly aren't. No, neither of us is. Look, the station's coming. The train ceased moving, but we wouldn't be leaving here. The door was already closed and locked. In a way, that made me feel better. I wouldn't have to accompany G in that place. On the other hand, this was also problematic. M and Ray kept going. What the heck? I can't believe they didn't even choose to come back. We probably just missed them too. If only we were here a little earlier. Then again, it could be A and E. 
If they stopped at the station that was already open, went up the stairs and came back down the other side. However, I don't think that's right. It would have taken too long, no? There's no way to figure it out right now, so I guess we're going to the recreation room. What do you think's in there? As the train drove off again, G asked me. Pro chain station, recreation. Uh, I, uh, I think... Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> a movie theater? Probably be some kind of theater. You know, to watch movies. Oh yeah, I love movies. Any kind. Especially if it allows us to skip having real class. If we watch a movie and take notes. That's so much more fun. Maybe, but we won't be in class or anything, I don't think. Though, I wonder if we'll be able to watch all kinds of movies there. Yeah. Action movies, dramas, thrillers. Isn't there a theater on the other side, though? I slapped my forehead at that revelation. You're right. It'll probably not be a movie theater, then. We should have gone the other way for that one. Not that we would have gotten to it, unless the other two groups wouldn't, would go first. Damn it. And here I thought I'd finally got an excuse to watch some stuff for adults. Excuse me? Yeah, movies for adults. Like documentaries. The sweat I felt starting to roll down my forehead dried up in a split second. Oh yeah, that kind of movie. Those are also, uh, really good. Not. What do you think I was suggesting exactly? Um, what kind of girl do you take me for? Did I plead the fifth? This isn't the United States, you can't. I mean like, uh, anime. What's anime? Thankfully I was saved by the gong. The station's coming. <laughs> oh my god. The train slowed down and I stood up. This time, the door leading leading to the lobby wasn't closed. If it had been, I would have probably gone insane. As we stepped onto the station proper, I snapped my fingers. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask. I took out the paper I found in the other room I explored. I decided to share it with her, thinking she might have an idea of who didn't belong. I found this paper. Do you know what it might refer to? G read what was written on it, but all that greeted me when I stared at it was a dumbfounded shrug. Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, when you think about it, don't we all fit those criteria? We don't belong together. No, wait, when you really think about it, it's even worse. We belong together, but in pairs, not in a full group. Like I belong with my sister, right? A and E belong together because they clearly know each other. Who do you belong with? I guess J. Well then, the only one that doesn't have any connection to anyone is Ray. Ray doesn't belong with anyone. I know J. Don't you know M too? You seem familiar with him. Right, I also know M. Wait, that doesn't... That didn't work. For this to fit what G was saying, we had to be in pairs. The twins and the eccentrics worked together, but the rest didn't split into two by two. I don't know. I think I need to think about what this means. What about the lower half? It's in capitals, and I think it has some grammatical errors in it. That's weird. Maybe it's written this way on purpose. Like if those letters need to be there somehow. You think it's like an anagram? Yeah, it might be an anagram. Good luck solving it, though. Not an anagram, an anagram. Bananagram. Got it. Listen, whatever its name is, we should solve it. Yeah, but we don't have that luxury right now. Let's go up. Maybe this place will really be a movie theater and they'll have all sorts of weird stuff. Weird like what? <laughs> Adult videos! Like the human centipede. She called from the lobby. Wait, wait, wait. I had to stop her. If that truly what was what was upstairs, I would die of embarrassment. Quickly, I ran inside. Behind me, the door closed. Hey, don't you dare watch those adult videos. It's okay, there aren't any videos. Come up and take a look. I climbed up the stairs. Up there I found... Dildos instead. The room was a casino. <laughs> well then, this is a casino. Yeah. This is a casino. We both sighed, a little deflated by the outcome. Wait, she sighed too? Did you really hope there would be... Hey, hey. You did it too. You sighed like you were disappointed. We each pointed at each other accusingly, as if we were two burglars who had separately chosen to rob the same place at the same time. <laughs> Let's just forget about it and get a move on. The door closed downstairs, right? Yeah. Well, at least this place doesn't have any ATM machines to drain your cards away. But it does look like a meeting place for some mafia or another. Oh no. That sounds a lot more dangerous than I thought. 
I doubt there's anyone else here, but you should be careful. Maybe there are traps, so let's not get shot. Okay, you can stop implying there are guns here too. I patted the twin reassuringly before we split up to look around the place. Well, we've never been here before, so this will be a nice one to look around. Let's see what we can click on. And that would be where they'd give us our chips. If there would have been anyone working in this place today. Alas, it seemed as if the staff full took their day off at the same on the same day. Imagine leaving your entire establishment to run itself for an entire day. People would break stuff and leave when and <laughs> leave when left without supervision. What are you talking about? I'm nothing. I just had a stupid thought about the working hours of the employees in this establishment, totally not set up to drain your entire bank account within a single day. Nobody works here. You're weird. Adults are weird. Maybe she was right. I wouldn't know I'm not an adult. I'm a six year old in an adult's body. I look around the place back where I could only spy a lot of slot machines, set up in perpendicular rows. Everything is built so you could keep running into more. So the rumours are true, your steps are interrupted every once in a while, so your eyes are forced to look at another slot machine. I set up to tempt you into playing. Alas, I don't have any credits. I'll come back when I'm a little, uh, richer. According to one of the machines, they took two credits. Exactly two. Not one and a half, not two and a quarter, exactly two. That fantasy landscape reminded me of a game I once played involving a big dragon in a large jungle. It had this feeling of nature to it. All it did was remind me of the outdoors. Since I was trapped in here, it was taunting me. Look at this freaking chandelier. That's pretty cool. I like the jagged edges. They remind me of a flower. <laughs> a square flower. I don't see it. It's too square-like. Have you heard of pixel art? Well, a pixel art flower. Pixel art? Is that Spanish for something? No, pixel art. It's computer made. Pixels are what appear on the screen and they're square. You can pile them up and eventually form shapes. I'd rather have a real flower. She reached up to the one that she had her shoulder strapped and toyed with it a little. Is that a real flower? No, it's just a little plastic thing. I wish it was real, but it would stop looking good after a little while, my clothing like that. I like natural things. It must be why she spent half your time looking at the portraits around this place. And why she doesn't know what pixel art is, what anime is. But she seems to be completely oblivious to just about everything that I know. <laughs> I could play on this table, but even if I knock the balls into the pits, nothing happened. Maybe I'll... I have to do it with a cue, as one would play a normal game. I've tried that too. I put all the balls in their correct positions and aimed with the cue. Right on cue, G came up behind me and pushed it onto my elbow, causing me to miss my shot and send the white ball into a pit. Hey! I tried that earlier. These tables seem they're just here for fun. Could have still let me play, you know. You really want to, though? Didn't you just do it because you thought it might help? You know that doing it more won't make you win more. You're right, I guess I wouldn't want to fall into the gambler's fallacy. What's that? It's about games of chance. The gambler's fallacy is when someone thinks that this time the outcome will be different just because they lost a bunch of times before. For example, if I played the slot machine and lost after 10 losses in a row, I think my chances of winning are higher to equalize the field back to a balance of zero. As if each minus would need a plus too. In reality, the chances of winning are still the same every time. It's not any luckier to get heads on a coin than it is to get tails, even if you get tails five times in a row. Yeah, you know about bad luck and getting ahead. What the... <laughs> she completely disregarded my explanation and vacated the immediate area to not suffer reprisals. I guess this is the point. This point went to G, though, considering the fact that I became annoyed at her insult. So what, huh? Kids these days. No decency. I took my mind off it before I started talking even more like a grandpa. My mind instead went back to the explanation about gamblers. Gamblers fell. fell <laughs> <laughs> that was nearly a slip of the tongue. Gambler's fallacy. <laughs> fallacy sounds way too much like phallus. It's way too close. Of course, given a big enough sample, the overall chances of having one, even once, do go up over time. It's just not that the next attempt is, that's any luckier. I took a glance at the table I'd set up. If I knocked the white ball into them, one had a pretty fair chance of making it inside. But is it worth all the ones that didn't make it in? Is the payoff important enough? Are we talking out our ass? Perhaps. Normally one would spin the wheel and let the ball fall into, onto the results, but without credits, there wasn't even a ball inside. I need to grab those first. According to what was written on the machine, it, it needed two credits. Where are we going to get credits? I saw the twin coming back through that opening. Found anything? No, only bathrooms. I don't even know if the toilets work here. 
You think Smiley installed all the plumbing necessary for it to be functional? Only one way to find out. You know how they call toilets thrones? Maybe that's the toilet we heard earlier in the other timeline. This right now is a royal flush. The jackpot is ours. Certainly enough, the toilet worked. The twin was not very amused by my joke. Gross. Anyway, did you notice everything in this room was some kind of in some kind of pair? I looked around. She was right. Kind of. The slot machines are mostly in groups of two. There are two roulette tables, two bookshelf halves, two pedestals with pots, two couches in the corner, two paintings on each side of the room, two bathrooms. But it doesn't have two counters and two ceiling ornaments. Yeah, those two are different from each other. But we might just be able to count them as two oddities. While she stopped talking, I couldn't help but think she was relating to her own situation. Most likely she was thinking about her sister. They formed a pair. Just like almost everything in this room, they formed a pair of twins, in fact. Hey, maybe someone lost their credits in the couch. That was what I was hoping for, but upon searching the cushions, I didn't find anything new. Oh, come on. That would have been so smart. People lose their chains in the couches all the time. Smiley, you suck. You probably have to search something that exists twice to find those credits. What about those vases? Maybe. There was also another couch in the other corner. I could try searching that one too. What is this? I tried opening this, but it wouldn't budge. There's a small lock in the middle of the bookshelves. Clearly I needed some kind of key to open this. Did you find a key or something? A key to open a bookshelf? This feels familiar somehow. So you did? No, I didn't find anything. But I bet you can get a key if you participate in the games around here. There's the billiard table, the roulette table, and the slot machine. Maybe. Alright then, let's focus on those things for now. So, it's your first time in a casino, I assume. Yeah, it is. My parents told me never to come to these places. I've never been in a casino. Although, the only one in this country is very far away from me. <laughs> With good reason. You know these establishments are made to make money, like most companies do, but this is like, really not good. For example, you know the colours around here? They're usually said to be pleasant to the eye. They want you to forget the time when you enter a casino, so there are no windows. Everything is laid out so you keep running into a game of chance after another. In a casino, the house wins overall, even if it's a minuscule percent more than what you'd spend. People, some people make money, most lose it. The house always comes up on top overall. Individually, you might win, but as a group, the house beats us. So if everyone stopped playing to stop the house from making money, then it would close. Yeah, it wouldn't win anymore. The chances of it happening are below zero though. In fact, the opposite will probably happen if people tried. What do you mean? People are greedy. If fewer people play, then that means they have their field open. The more egocentric ones will take the opportunity. It's all a psychological game because when those guys win, everyone wants to win. If one of us left this place, you think the others would get jealous and try to stop them just because they can't leave too? Maybe. I was truly hoping it wouldn't come to them. In this corner, nothing. In the other corner, I searched through the couch. In the other corner, I screamed triumphantly when I found two credits. Yeah, eat shit, Smiley, I found your credits. I knew it. People lose their changing couches all the time. I was right. Yeah. Calm down, it's just two credits. You couldn't understand the absolute euphoria of figuring this out by yourself. It's like putting on an old coat and checking your pocket to find two dollars in there. This is the stuff of life. The surge is so blissful, it courses through your entire being and empowers you. Like only the fountain of youth ever could. This is sublime. The feeling. It's so amazing. No way. You're overreacting way too much. <laughs> Look at you little ant. Jealous of my puzzle solving abilities. Gaze in my absolute triumph. In this moment nothing could get to me. So we can leave then? Of course. I solved it all. I did it. The doors are still closed and locked. Ah, right. Well, maybe one thing would get to me. The fact that we were still locked up in here. I pocketed the credits anyway. One small step for me, and still one small step for the puzzle solution. Let's play roulette then. I mean, uh, slot machines. Time to play. Are you sure that's good? Why don't you just lose the credits if you play badly? Play badly? You can't play badly at this. It's all a game of chance. I don't think we get locked out of the solution to the room though. Be that as it may, it might be a better idea not to pick a completely random game out of the lot and lose our credits like that. And the roulette table isn't random you think? She had a point. I figured I should have gone and given both a glance before I pick which I'd play. Okay. Maybe I can put the coins here and let the ch let chance decide if we make it out. Wait, isn't that too dangerous? You worry too much. Clearly the credits are made to go somewhere. Where else in these tables? 
I mean, I still have this coin I found in the bedroom earlier. I could try it. It was too big. It didn't fit. You can only use the stuff from this room, if I had to guess. That means the credits must go in here. Before I do anything hasty, I want to make sure there's nowhere else I can use them. If we lose the coins, we're toast. We can't be toast if we're not bred. Careful about what you say. Huh? No, I mean, I literally can't be bred. I'm a person. Shook my head and glanced over at the slot machines. Those could take the credits too, no doubt. Which was the correct option then? Obviously it doesn't matter. Those were normal vases, nothing special about them. Slot machine. This is probably still our best bet, I guess. Okay, go for it. I didn't want to let G do it, but the little scamp swiped my credits on the way to the machines. You owe me for this thievery though. Got it? Whatever you say, Gramps. I wasn't nearly old enough to be a grandpa. I balled my hands into fists as she opened hers to slide the coins into the machine. With a single pull of the lever, everything lined up quickly. Well, that's lucky. No, you stupid butt, it's made this way. Why would they make us lose and waste our time? The key fell into the chute down below. G took it with a big grin. That's mine now. We need to finish escaping this room. I'll keep it after, though. I'll do whatever. You little scamps can't be controlled anyway. I'm not a scamp. I'm not a grandpa. <laughs> Truce. It was never a war to begin with. She agreed to those terms. Even if they weren't really terms for a truce. Yeah, so maybe if you solve this with the roulette uh, with the roulette table, it would change the outcome. In the glass pane of these bookshelves, there was a little lock. Come here, G. We need that key. G came by when I called for her. At least she wasn't disobedient enough to disregard a potential lead to escaping this hellhole. She inserted the key and turned it, unlocking the doors. Actually, she's been very agreeable, to be completely fair to her. I opened them and looked at the books inside more closely. That's quite a lot of books. Think we have to read them to leave? Sounds like a bore. Normally I wouldn't be so much against it, but look how thick some of them are. We can't solve this in any way. Wait, the books are normally supposed to be sorted in alphabetical order, right? Maybe if I... I replace the books along the rows. Nothing. I thought it had to be something, but the twin lit up at my suggestion, and it's failure. I know. I don't think the titles mean anything. Look at the sides. All of them have a group of two letters, right? This one is AU, and there's also CA and HE. Are we talking about a periodic table of elements? Are you saying it's sexist because none of them have she? No. I'm saying it's like a periodic table. We just need to put them in order like the periodic table. What? There's no periodic table here. How would Smiley expect us to solve this? I remember it like the back of my hand. I can solve this no problem. But you're right, it's odd that we wouldn't get that kind of hint. I took out a few of the books to make some space and a plastic sheet fell to the ground. G grabbed it before I could and she proceeded to laugh at it. Oh, it's a periodic table. I guess you just need to mess with the books enough first. See, there's no point being too philosophical about something when all you need is a good shake. Yeah, your face looks like a good shake. I muttered the words but I wasn't sure if she heard them. If she did, she said nothing while I rearranged the books according to the periodic table. Nothing happened when I placed the last book though. What now? Hmm. The side of the books don't only have letters, but numbers too. That's the code, right? Wait, why do you think that we should put them in order of the periodic table instead of numerical first? There just aren't enough numbers. Altogether, only nine books are labelled with a number, and now, from the order we put them in, it's 96283. 7154. This might be the codes of the keypads. 96283-7154? That's a pretty long number. Think you can remember it? I can try, but you should try too. We both hurried over to the keypads to enter the codes. The doors all came unlocked down below, allowing us to leave the station once more. It was the third lock which I took care of, leading to the scanner gate. Of course, that was a dead end right now. I was deflated by our lack of findings. The fact we hadn't uncovered anything new was fairly frustrating. In the other room I explored, I'd found some paper and still had the hammer. Gone unused so far. And this one? Nada. This had just been nothing. Maybe we should go back and meet with the others now. They might have found something. Maybe, but shouldn't we keep going too? If they keep this up, they'll run it. We'll run out of stations. She interrupted my thoughts by offering an alternative. Normally, I wouldn't have considered it, but with the others still doing as they pleased, not to mention going back empty-handed isn't really productive. I'll think about it. It took a little time, and we were in one of the lobbies. If there was a need to keep going the other way, I'd just have taken the staircase to head to the other side. However. If we were going to a new station, this is probably the best way to go too. The other side, further westward, had nothing left but the reactor. It sounded far too dangerous for me to want to explore it with G. By the way, thanks for talking with me and accompanying me in the escape room. 
Hmm? What do you mean? Well, I don't want to go too much details, but my sister has a habit of doing things without consulting me. This has led to bad events in the past. I can imagine. She doesn't seem to be uh, the kind of person to contemplate things before she does them. For once, it's just nice to get along with someone who doesn't think I need to be shielded or sheltered for that matter. I realised at that point she had been acting this way the entire time because she wanted to get out of H's shadow. Maybe she felt inferior to H. It had been clear as crystal that the twins cared for each other, and it was also clear that H was always in the forefront. She was always the twin who spoke first, always the twin who did something first. Was it for safety? Was it because H wanted the spotlight? I wasn't sure anymore. I meant to ask too, what's your favourite colour? Huh? What do you mean? Your favourite colour? I want to know what it is. That's a little out of left field. Does that have anything to do with... No, no, it's just banter. It doesn't have anything to do with our situation. I'm just wondering. Isn't it nice to be talking about something normal for once? Come on, even you must know that much. You're older and wiser than I am, right? I mean, I guess. Okay, I guess I like green. But I kind of like all of them equally. I don't like green. I don't know why, I just don't. It gives me the creeps. It makes me feel really, really bad. Green's a perfectly natural colour. Is it because it's my answer? I think I used to like it, but now I like warm colours more, I guess. Nothing to do with your answer, don't worry. She averted her gaze nonetheless for a short moment. We were waiting for the train to arrive, but it was taking a while. If it was on the other side, it would take a while to get here. Hmm. I still fail to see the purpose of the question. You're right, the colour doesn't really matter. What do you like to eat then? Didn't you just agree that it didn't really matter? Yes, I did, but I, I want to know other things then. It was her turn to look mildly offended for reasons beyond my understanding. If you don't want to talk about colours, then I thought you might want to talk about food. Or pastimes. Or anything. The topic doesn't really matter. It's all just for fun. You didn't forget that what that was, right? Fun? I wasn't heartless, so I decided to play into it a little. Okay, okay. I like sandwiches. <laughs> now that's an answer I can agree with. That's so basic. Nothing else? That's your pick? Of all the possibilities, you pick sandwiches. Hell yeah. Why not like pizza? Pizza's cool, I love pizza. Oh yeah, I thought, who didn't like pizza? Everyone loves pizza. Pizza's kind of like a sandwich. <laughs> I don't. I hate pizza. But you work in a pizzeria. You deliver pizza all day. That's probably why he hates pizza. Isn't that great? You can smell it all the time. I bet you even get free slices once in a while. No, I don't like it exactly for those reasons. I feel that too. I tap the logo I had, my, had on my outfit. I deliver pizzas and I have to deal with pizzas all day when I work. It's always pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza delivery, pizza preparation, cooking pizzas and ovens, and always there's a stench of pizza everywhere. When I'm on a break, I smell like pizza, and when I come home, the outfit has to be washed because it's all pizza all the time. It's kind of like overexposure. Maybe I liked pizza before, but now, now it feels like work. It kind of reminds me of a job way too much. It's supposed to be a part-time job, but now I'm in too deep. <laughs> I don't know when I'll finally get to quit this job and do what I wanted. She stared, mildly horrified at my outburst. I calmed down and sighed to reassure her. Sorry, I guess I was a bit harsh. It's not like it really has anything to do with you, though. They're my problems, so I shouldn't put them on your shoulders. No, it's okay. I know what it's like to do something you don't want to do. What do you mean? But she remained silent from that point on. As the train had arrived, we had to take it. I followed after her. Before the train set off, though, I had to think about our plan of action. We could either go back to the lounge or continue to another station, which would be the gym. She was right, right in a way about the fact that going back empty-handed wouldn't be useful for anybody, but she forgot that each station didn't always have something. Already we'd seen it with the first stations. The pantry had food, but nothing useful. The library? Same thing. The bedroom had a paper I'd found, and the stars had the maps, but the others didn't contain anything special. Evidenced by our meager findings, it had only proved that the fact that many stations would have nothing. There was an equal chance Jasmine and H had also left the lounge. Perhaps heading back to it was a waste. On the other hand, if they were still there, then not going back would cost me points with Jasmine. She'd probably get angry. Was I going to chance it? Okay, well this one's got a lot of choices. We have to choose who to go with and and then, then I feel like the way we solved that, that room could have changed it as well. And now we've got this choice as well. 
So we'll wrap this one up here, and the next one I think we'll we'll try continue on. I think that'll take us to the reactor, right? I'm curious about the reactor because we haven't been to that room yet, and I feel like we're not likely to get murdered because A is not with us. Because every time we get murdered, it's always by A, and since we got G with us, I think we're good. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.